All right, the Reds Fridays talking Reds. Gareth Roberts joined by Rob Gutman today. Um, Going to get into early Trent's competitive debut for England last night. Did well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, you were looking for him not to get exposed in front of the nation and mm. not to be one of those one in ten games. I think Trent can have. I thought he was very competent. Really, I thought he gave England some uh, some proper dynamism down that right hand side. He was a proper winger at times, and I know Trippier's done well. People like Trippier. I don't pay much attention to him because I want Trent to play every week. I th but I thought Trent gave England a bit more going forward. His dead ball kicking, it can be better. Mm. It can be better. But I like the fact that he stepped up every time. I like that he wants it, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pleased that Southgate, because it's clearly they'd, they'd said before, right, you're taking mm. everything. I thought that was nice to see. They, even on the free kick, the 19-year-old has the best free kick. I mean, it's an awful free kick. But it doesn't matter. You know, he's, he's allowed those games. But I like that John Stones was, was switching the play quite well in the first half. Some difficult to control balls, and Trent was bringing them down, getting England on the attack. Put some decent balls in. Yeah, he did. Cleared I, one off the line as well. Was that him? Was that it was him. Got, yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was everywhere, man. I mean, um, Mel, Mel threw some stats out as well uh, at, at our time, saying that, or around our time, saying he'd had more touches in the opposition half than any other England player, uh, more key passes uh, and more crosses in the in the opposition half. So while there's plenty of talk about you know how committed were both sides to actually wanting to win because of the group situation and blah 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 blah. It was important for Trent, wasn't it, as you say, to just show that he's, he's, he's more than capable on that stage. And he did again. He looked confident. He looked, he looked like he'd been there. You know, it looked like it could have easily been his 20th cap rather than his first competitive one. Yeah, yeah. You do have to pinch yourself and remember the age there. 19, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's sort of, in a way, the, any, any pretensions there are of like playing out the draw are difficult when you've got a kid who's that hungry to make an impression on that stage. And he doesn't let himself down. I mean, he, and on the Belgian team, yeah, people like Batshuayi, who want to score goals in a World Cup. It's and, and boosted the ball and against the post into his face. That was very, very <laughs> funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Son. Don't know how we did that. Uh, I mean, what, what did you think? What did you think of? I, I know we don't do loads of England on here, but what, yeah. what did you think of England in general so far? Um, you know what? I'm, I, I get bang into it in a World Cup. I don't give a damn about England outside of an international tournament. There's no Liverpool playing. There's a couple of Liverpool players out there. So I get, I get properly into, into England. I want to see England go really, really far. I remember Italia 90 when we got to the semi-final and just anybody who had any kind of hesitancy about the England concept got into just it. got into it. It was yeah. just so exciting. And I'm, I'm, I was very invested last night in the idea that England can get to the quarters and maybe beyond. And I, and I thought it was quite funny that Fucking up was the big win. And when Belgium scored, I was, I was out of my chair going, get in. <laughs> I was fuming when, 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 uh, when they got their booking, so they were get, edging below us early on. No, I th you know, and people said, oh, well, if they, don't, if they don't win, they'll lose momentum. And oh, there's a lot of bollocks. I don't think Southgate did. Eight changes, wasn't it? So it's not even like, yeah. it's not essentially the first team that's lost the game, if you like. Yeah, do you know what could have happened? He could have put out two thirds of a first team, still lost the game. And because they were only half interested in it. And it had gone, well, look at that, that's your first team suddenly looks shit. Well, no one can say England suddenly aren't any good. Yeah. It was the perfect outcome for him, I thought. And he's got no, no injuries, and they get an extra day now because of the way the draw is as well to train. So, yeah, I mean, looks pretty good for them in terms of this game against Colombia on Tuesday. Uh, all right, next thing then, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Peter Moore, the chief executive of Liverpool, has been talking at the uh, International Business Festival which is held here on Liverpool's waterfront just down the road at the uh, exhibition centre down there. Uh, it's been talking about the Reds and it's got up people's noses, it's fair to say, if you look on Twitter this morning. Uh, lots of Reds not particularly happy about some of his comments there, um, including the spying cop lads. I know they put a tweet out, I saw that on my way in uh, this morning. I mean, lots of what he said, I've got no real problem with. I think it's more choice of words and way of saying things and do you really need to go there in certain respects? So I'll explain what I'm talking about. He says, we're in a world now where if you're not a 500 million pound football team, you're not going to win anything. The ability for us to be able to stay up bluntly with the Manchester Uniteds and the Barcelonas and the PSGs and the Real Madrids, all of whom have slightly different business models, becomes critical. Uh, because if we don't stay up with them, we don't compete. We're in a we are the proud owners of the world's most expensive defender in Virgil van Dijk at £75 million, pound, but that money has got to come from somewhere. And being able to drive that growth becomes critical. Why? Because you invest in the team. Our primary focus for every pound, euro, dollar we make is to give it to Jurgen Klopp and our scouting staff and our sporting director and say, go and buy the best players, go and find Mo Salah. Now, that bit, 
so far so good. I'm all right with it's that. It's all good news, that. Yeah, I understand that Liverpool have got to make money, compete, it's hard. I know that um, lots of good players will cost lots of good money, all that. Sound is the bit that's got up people's noses. So he says, he starts talking about local fans versus international fans. Dangerous ground, I would suggest, for him. And here's where he went with it. This is a city, at times, that doesn't like the fact that football is a business. They don't like people like me, suits. They believe football just happens, and I get that. Now, I'm going to stop him there, if you like. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cool. Liverpool, how many, how many, what's the population of Liverpool? 400,000? 300,000? I, I think the L postcode's about 450, but the greater Merseyside area, maybe a million people, it's a lot of people. Yeah, so it's a lot of people, so that's a big assumption to start saying, they believe football just happens. Do we? Or do we believe actually a lot of us are skinting ourselves to watch it, and we know the money's going into club coffers? And we know we're paying sixty pounds for BT Sport, whatever for Sky Sports. Now you need Amazon Prime to watch some of the games and whatever. We're more than more than aware that it's a business and that there's lots of money washing around. He goes on, eh, but this is not the old days. Eh, if you're in, if you're not, if you're not in the multiple hundreds of millions of pounds of revenue, you can't afford the best players. He says he loved visiting Liverpool fan clubs all around the world. Well, we've done that and we love that too. He says how he met fans in San Francisco. Then he says. To a man and a woman, they will tell you, I have visited Liverpool to watch the team and I learnt about the city. It's not the city I thought it was. Nobody stole my hubcaps. My car didn't end up on bricks. It's beautiful. It's a jewel. The people were nothing like I imagined. He's quoting the people he's, he's quoting talking, these yeah. imaginary people he's talking about. Yeah. But nevertheless, do we need to go there? Do we need to be talking about hubcaps and cars on bricks? It's a bit 1990s, 1980s, that isn't it? A bit Harry Anfield. Yeah, he's, yeah. He didn't, yeah, it's cl this is the problem with him. <clears throat> a lot of the substance of what he's getting, the spirit of what he's saying there is quite nice. But the way he's saying it, it's, it's sort of like th it's a three pint conversation in a pub with your mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Where you're not exactly picking the best words. Where you, at the end of it, you finish the sentence with, you know what I mean though, right? <laughs> not, fucking, <laughs> not the, but the literality of what he's saying. Look, Peter, if, if you're watching, I know you do. Oh, well, we don't, but if he's, You've just got to be a bit more careful because those sort of things reference an, an era where it was a little bit nasty, and it mm. was, and it was, and those sort of accusations were very, very hurtful for people in Liverpool. And I know he's contrasting with the fact that they're not true, but <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah, it's a bit like I don't know. It's a bit like picking a racist stereotype. You know, they say that these kind of people are like that. <laughs> well, actually, and, and using the worst word to describe yeah, yeah, yeah. them. You know. It's, it's, just, it's just a bit clumsy. And, you know, and I don't think this is being over picky. I know some people say, oh, come off it. He's, he's saying something nice. He is. He's a figurehead for Liverpool football. Yeah, he has to be a little bit better at PR than this, I yeah. think. Um, look, the spirit of what he's saying, I th maybe we should, we should end on, on that, because I think the fact that he says it's, it's beautiful, it's a jewel, the people, the people were nothing like I imagined. What did you imagine? <laughs> These people, you know what I mean? What did you imagine we were like? Savages <laughs> running around with, like, what the fuck? cars on fire and hitting each other with... Iron bars. Or so. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's just, just a, go to the bar, Peter. Get another pint. Yeah, shut it, up. It's just a bit mad, Peter. And, and maybe you didn't need to say it. And look, you were speaking at a business event, and maybe you thought it wasn't going to end up in the press. If so, naive. Uh, okay. I mean, it's not the first time. I, I just think he maybe, as you say, PR. He needs to scrub up a little bit on PR. I'm sure he's an intelligent fella. I'm sure he's bringing something to the table. Otherwise, he wouldn't have got the job. But the constant PR sell around himself and being from Liverpool. This kind of thing, I don't think it, it helps with, with you know, winning friends and influencing people, if you like. Anyway, all right, let's move on from, uh, from that madness. I uh, want, want to have a quick word about it. Another, another, another man putting his foot in it a little bit, if you like. Uh, Mark Halsey, uh, former Premier League referee. He says uh, he once showed a yellow card to a player who asked them to. Yeah, I saw the video <laughs> of that. It's, it's sound, this, isn't it? He says, uh, the player said... If I don't get caution now and I'll get one on Tuesday, I'll miss the big derby. And Halsey says, and I said to him, well, when I give a free kick against you, leather the ball 50 yards and I can caution you for the scent. Uh, he said the incident happened in 2011. He told the player who he did not name uh, not to do anything stupid to get the yellow card. 
if you've got big games coming up and you're on four yellow cards, one more means you, sus- you get suspended. He came up to me at the end of the game and he said, thanks for that, Mark. Uh, BBC have reported... I owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> BBC have reported that the professional game match officials limited, which is responsible for referees in English leagues, had no knowledge of it, and the FA are said to be looking into the comments as well. And what's interesting about this, before I get your opinion on it, is... Um, we had, you know, we regularly have Stephen Warnock on a, a show called The Pro View. If you don't subscribe, and, and Stephen's great on it, especially the last few, he's really been opening up, telling some great tales that you wouldn't get to hear elsewhere. But a while, a while back, he, he, he described a similar incident because we were asking about relationships with referees, and, I, and you see them talking on the pitch, they're saying things to each other that obviously they see them in the tunnel and away from the cameras and all that. So. There's some kind of relationship there that you're never going to know about, really. And maybe Mark Halsey's just being a little bit too honest because what what Warnock was saying was that's not, you know, that happens basically. Mm. There was another lad, I, I, I can't remember, I, Warnock might not have named him, but he said similar incidents. I think it actually might have been, more, you know, you know the old way you always think them lads are getting booked because they want Christmas off. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Warnock said, yeah, it kind of does go on with some of them. And, and, and some of them will go, if I just get one more, I'll take the ban here because I want to play in that game. That's exactly what's happened here. So it's not a great shock, but again, does, does Halsey need to be that honest? Exactly. Do story. you know what? It, it, it's a good story. On the surface, I've seen, I've seen some outrage about it in social media that it's a confession of outright corruption. In, in broad terms, it, it, is, it is a bit. But I suppose if you think about it, it almost, it almost begs the question, should the rule be changed? If a player needs a booking, he can get himself a booking. Yeah. But the, da- the danger is, as, and as Halsey says, and don't be silly, you just go and boot someone up the ass. <laughs> and it's not good. It's almost as if it should be an official request from the club. Like there are, before the game, it's announced three players have officially requested bookings. And they just granted the booking <laughs> in something. They'll be classified as 89th minute bookings. You know what I mean? It's a bit mad, but... If you're going to miss a game and you can force the event like that by just booting the ball away, taking your shorts off, whatever you want, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could, but you can do it. I think for the referee to say that does show a, a degree of common sense because you let the player take it into his hands, what's he going to do? Yeah, he could, he could break someone's leg or whatever. Yeah, he could, so he could get something mad. I, I suppose leathering the ball away when a free kick's being given against shit is... It's a pretty soft book and it's not doing anyone any harm. Anyway, I'm sure the FA and whatever will make a big fuss about it, so we'll see. Uh, on the Anfield app today, uh, finally, just want to plug our stuff as usual. Uh, a load of stuff, the gutter, uh, which myself and Rob will, will be on, which we're going to go and record in about an hour or so. Uh, be discuss- discussing all the latest transfer gossip, all the latest goings on around Liverpool, who we might sign, uh, the possibility of those signings, latest links, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a World Cup show does what it says on the tin. City Talk today, as usual, uh, will be on the radio. Uh, tune in and have a listen to that. If you can't listen on the radio, it'll be out later on as a free podcast. And last of all today, uh, AFQ will be out as well, which uh, lo- loads of people on Twitter ask us soft questions. We have a bevy and answer them, and it's a bit of a laugh, and loads of people say it's the favourite show, so we're going to keep on doing it. All right, uh, nice one, Rob. Uh, that's been today's Talk and Rest. We'll be back on Monday. <laughs>